It's Monday, March 14th, 2022, and this is Cafe Devo, coming to you almost live from First Congregational Church at the point of Saginaw and Washington in beautiful downtown Duran, Michigan. I'm Pastor Steve Wood. There's my pal Bugsy hanging out in the corner over there, and I hope your Monday is going well. We're continuing our journey through the book Into the Wilderness which is our Lenten devotion series prepared especially for the friends and members of First Congregational Church, but we invite everybody to join with us for it. And as we go through our reading on day 11 of Lent, reading to you this morning from the book of Luke, chapter 8, beginning with verse 1. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, and Susanna, as well as many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. This is the meaning of the parable. Seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on the good soil stands for those with noble and good hearts who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Focus today on the idea of the water of life. In the physical sense, water is life. You cannot survive without it. Your brain and heart are over 70% water, and your lungs are over 80% water. You can survive without food for 40 days or more, but without water, you will die in as few as three days. So when Jesus told the Samaritan woman at the well in Sychar, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. She did not fully understand, but she said, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus completed his analogy by saying, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. That's all from John chapter 4. The truth of our need for Christ's gift of living water is reflected in our physical bodies and experienced in our spirit. You know what it is to be thirsty. So when Jesus talked about drinking the living water so that we never thirst spiritually again, you get it. We cannot live without him. This becomes even more evident in the wilderness. For since creation, since the creation of the world, 
God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Romans 1.20. Meditate on the living water today. And for your daily fast, fast profiling. Do you ever profile people by judging them based on some external thing? Do you ever look down at them because they're elderly or young or poor or rich or disabled or black? Ask God to shine his light on any form of profiling you might be guilty of today and fast from it. Bless us, O Lord, on this Monday. We're grateful for it. We ask for your strength and your guidance. Go with us and use us, and may we bring you glory, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, that's going to do it for us on this Monday edition of Cafe Devo. I'm Pastor Steve Wood signing off for now. God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow.